Okay, now this is the secondary high flow system that you would use more for pediatric application all the way from basically 0.2 liters of flow up to 66 liters of flow, but for pediatric application, the highest flow that we've seen so far has been between 25 and 30 liters per minute to create that inadvertent pressure for those patients that just won't tolerate the conventional CPAP or anything like that. So what does a circuit consist of? The chamber, a single limb heated wire circuit. Okay. We have the cannula, which is our OptiFlow cannula, and we'll get into that. It's a pediatric one, or it's a small. And then this adapter, and I'll show you how that mounts this force to the system. So there's three pieces to that particular circuit. When you get ready to set the system up, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a cannula out of the package. We know about the heater, but again, when you turn it on, leave it in the invasive mode. That's 3744 milligrams. If you need to cool it down, you put it in the non-invasive mode. Okay, from here, this adapter here is just a little bitty multiple access adapter. It has the stem and the humidifier system, so that it allows me to hook it up to a flow meter and I can get flow down into my chamber. Okay, once that's set up, I've got my heater turned on, I set my FiO2 that I want to set, and I set the flow that I want to deliver to the patient. Then I take a cannula out of the package. When you take a cannula out of the package, this will pivot. So again, you can take the strength away and all of this stuff around the system. If you want to do a nebulized treatment, you can put a nebulizer between here and there to administer medication to the patient if you'd like. When you get ready to put it on the patient, first thing I'm going to do is show you the breakaway. The breakaway strap just gives you the capability when you put it around somebody's neck, if they pull on it, it's going to break away. Why do we have that? Because I'll be the patient is as far as when I take and put the cannula on. And it's sort of halfway tight. Now this is a pediatric cannula, so it's not the first, but you see how it's pulling on that circuit? I take this strap and I pull it up so that it takes the drag off the circuit so the cannula wears flat so it doesn't get pulled back and forth. At that point in time, you have flow going through the system. Does it say on the bag the, the suggested flow this rate? This is zero to basically 66 liters per minute. So whatever the patient needs. Whatever okay. the patient needs. And again, the lowest we've had this cannula on a patient has been about a three-year-old. And you might be able to put it down a little bit lower, but it is really fairly comfortable. The difference between using this cannula versus the other ones, it disperses the flow, so it's very comfortable. Patients don't mind that whatsoever. So again, circuit, your flow meter, set your FIO2, you're set ready to go. It's just like putting on a conventional cannula. The only thing is this may feel. Let's get into a few features of that. The do's and don'ts. I'm going to ruin this one just to show you what you should never do. You don't want to pinch. You don't want to pull. As you stretch it, you ruin it. What this napion allows it to do is just allows the excess condensation to dissipate. If you want to take this cannula, if your equipment's on this side of the bed and you want to reposition it, this can be pulled out, repositioned on the opposite side, so you can put it on either side of the bed if you'd like. And the cannulas themselves have a little bit of a flared cut tip so they're comfortable as far as when they're in the nose, it directs the flow and disperses it all the way around. Any questions, give me a call, 253-740-2041, and I'll call you back right away.